Hey everybody, hope everyone is well. So today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm basically in the process of trying to get a new camera and I want to show you how I go about doing that while living here in Japan. Used prices here in Japan seem to be a lot better than in the UK. So especially with the strong pound against the yen, that increases the price difference even more. And you can get some really good deals here in Japan that you probably couldn't get in the UK. Now, I said in my last video, and I've been thinking for a while about getting a new Nikon camera. Now, for those who follow my videos, you know that I use the OM-1, which I love and I'll continue using, but I don't see any issue with using two systems and choosing whichever system suits whichever purpose, whichever type of photography you are doing. I always kept hold of my Nikon lenses when I stopped really using Nikon because I knew when a camera came around and the opportunity was there that I would still get another Nikon camera. Now, I've been waiting to sell my Nikon Z62, which I sold last week. I've sort of recalibrated a bit of other money that I had around and I think I've got enough now to get what I wanted, which was a used Z8. Now, I've been looking on the sites here in Japan and there are actually very few used Z8s. It's still quite a new camera and obviously no one's getting rid of them. There were, however, quite a lot of used Z9s and I hadn't even considered a Z9 because I thought it's going to be way too big for me. I'm not really interested. So I've just been doing lots of research in the last week or so and I think I might be changing my mind. You can get a used Z9 for about the same price as a used Z8 here. And if you think about the new prices, there's a big difference. So you can really get a good deal on a used Z9. One of the reasons I thought a Z9 might also be an option for me is I still have kept this monster of a lens, the 300 mm 2.8 VR version one, which is very old now. And I'd basically get not very much for it if I did try and sell it, but it is probably the best, well, no, it is the best lens I've ever used. It's razor sharp. And I think it will also focus really well with a Z8 or Z9 using the FTZ as that adapter. So I really want to use that. I will also be using my 500 millimeter 5.6 that I've kept held of using mostly on my D500, which I should probably sell at some point, but don't think I will. But yeah, I think this also will go really well with a Z8 or Z9. I know there are lots of great Z lenses for wildlife, but I can't afford to do both. First, I'll get the camera, and then maybe in a couple of years, if I can sell some of the stuff I've got, I possibly get a Z lens. But for now, I think those two F mount lenses will work really well with a Nikon Z camera. So what I'll do is we'll go on the computer, and we can go through together my process of searching for prices and seeing how I can go about getting a new lens. As I said, either a used Z8, if one comes available in the next few days, or a used Z9. So let's get on the computer. Right, so here we are at the computer and I've got a few tabs open as I've been searching. So this website is called Kitamura and it's one of the big camera websites in Japan. Now, I live on a small island, as you know, called Okinawa, and we only have two or three Kitamura stores on the island, and they're very small. They have a few used items and a few new items in the store, but you usually have to order stuff. I actually went in and tried to order a Z9 two years ago, and they said it will take at least eight months to get here, and we can't even guarantee that. And when I was pondering, the guy said to me, but we do have an OM-1 on this shelf that someone ordered but didn't want. Do you want it? I went away and thought about it for a day, came back the next day and bought it. And that's where my OM-1 story started. So it was a bit of an accident. I'd actually originally tried to get the Z9 and I don't regret it at all. The OM-1 has been amazing and is still amazing. And I will continue to enjoy and use it. But anyway, so the there's only two stores and they have very few things in stock and I could probably go in and order a Z8 new and it says they've got nothing in stock even in their central office in Tokyo and everything's on back order that means at least six months so what you have here is you look 
you've got that's the price of a new Z8. So if we go into the currency converter here, five three nine thousand. That's two thousand eight hundred and eighteen pounds sterling. And if I go into Amazon UK, if I put Nikon Z8 in here, right there we go. So it says it's a £3,999. So in the currency converter, a new one in Okinawa or Japan is £2,818. That is more than a £1,000 difference for a camera. That's a huge difference. Now, of course, that's not just because things are cheaper here, which they are. It's also due to the very weak yen in comparison to the pound. Now, in America, things are always cheaper than in the UK, so the probably price differential isn't as big, either between America and England or between America and Japan. But basically, that's the new prices, but I don't want to wait for ages to get it. So this price here is the used price, 498,000 yen, right? And there are two options at the moment for used. Here they are. One is at 498, and that's B grade, and one is 513,000 yen, and that's AB grade. Those are the two options. They've got some options coming next week, possibly. They'll go very quickly, and they sold these ones this week. So there are two options available. But what got me thinking was when I started looking for the Nikon Z9, which, as I said, I hadn't even considered. But then you look here, and the new price, 694 is way more than I can afford in comparison to the English price. Let's do that. 94,000 is 3,628 pounds. Now it's actually a lot cheaper than I thought it was gonna be. So the difference between the Japanese price and the English price is not as huge as I thought it was gonna be. So it's 3.6 and it's 4.4. Four. So there's 800 pounds difference, but not as much as the 1,000 pound difference between the Z8s in England and in Japan. But anyway, back to the used prices. As you can see, the 508, that is actually cheaper or roughly the same as the price of a used Z8. And there's a load more options here. They've got a load more in stock. And what you can do is if I click on one of those 508 ones, so let's click on this one. Now, they'll give a little bit of information. They'll show some pictures here and you can zoom in and you can check if there's any damage or any superficial, there's a few little scratches there. B grade is usually pretty good. Yep, there's a small scratch there. And I expect there's probably in, yeah, there it is. There's a scratch there as well. But that to me is not a huge issue. Um, it's obviously been well used and that's fine. And what you can do is you can go up here, go to translate. It'll give you a little bit of information about the camera. So B average, there is some dust in the viewfinder, some shine. I imagine that's some slight discoloration of the rubber. And there are large scratches on the exterior. One battery charger, main body charging, AC adapter, body cap. And that is in Kagawa. Now what would happen is I will go into the Kitamura shop in Okinawa. I will show them this product on their computer in store. They will then order that from Kagawa Perfection. Now, we are a small island, three hours flight south from the mainland. So that will be sent down from the Kitamura in the mainland to the Kitamura in Okinawa. It takes usually four or five days, maybe up to a week. They will then call me when it arrives in their store. I will then go to look at it with no pressure whatsoever to buy. I can look at it if I think the scratches are bigger than I like or the dust in the viewfinder is too much of a problem. I can say thank you, but no thank you. They will then keep it in their store or they'll send it back. And that's how I buy nearly all my used stuff since I've been doing photography here in Japan. And I've got loads of great deals over the years. The benefit also with buying through Kitamura and not through a private seller. And I have bought through a private seller. I sold my Nikon Z6 this week to a private seller. The benefit with getting Kitamura, even with a used item, they will give you a six month warranty from the shop. So if something does go wrong, I will get my money back within six months, as long as it's not user error. So there's that assurance that you get, that you don't get from a private seller. So what do you think? Should I just wait until a Z8 becomes available? 
it will be roughly the same price as that. Maybe slightly, it might be, as we saw before, 498, 490. I've been checking on and off the last few weeks. I haven't seen anything much cheaper than about 490 because it's a newer camera. So, but I just wonder whether it is worth me getting a Z9 instead. If I don't want to take out a heavy camera, I'll take out my Olympus stuff. That's fine. But I just think for using heavy lenses and my 300mm 2.8 is such a beast, I think the Z9 might be of benefit. So yeah, that's where I'm at. So I'm going to make a decision in the next few days, go into the shop, place an order, and I will get a used Z9 or Z8 in the next few days for a substantially lesser price than I would get if I was buying in the UK. Anyway, I just want to share my process for going through and buying used stuff. The people in the shop don't usually speak English, but they're really helpful. And as I said, there's no pressure to buy anything. You can actually trade your old gear, and I've taken in, but they give you a pittance, really. You're much better selling it privately. One of the things about getting the Z9 rather than the Z8 is it uses CF Express Type B cards, and I don't have any. I have a million SD cards. My Nikon Z2 also had a CF Express slot, but again, I only used SD cards. But I have thought about the benefits of CF Express for a while, how it helps you take more faster bursts, how you have a larger buffer, how you can take longer and more higher quality video. So it's something that I have thought about. And if I get a Z9, I'm going to have to invest in a couple of CF Express cards. Now, again, I had a page open for that. When I looked at Type B cards a few years ago, they looked so expensive and they seem to me to have come down in price somewhat. And the difference now between the best SD cards and Type B cards isn't that large. And there's a bit of a sale on at the moment with Amazon. And some of these don't look too bad. I mean, this is 512 gigabytes Lexar, pretty good write speed there for, what is it? It's, 15,980, that's 83 pounds. And if we look at the same card, and I was in England, that's it there. So if we look at the same card on Amazon UK, this is it here, it is 171 pounds. Now, obviously that's not on sale, but yeah. So, you know, 81 pounds for the Japanese one, 171 pounds for the English one. So I think I would potentially get that and maybe one other. I saw some really cheap ones earlier. So yeah, I would have to invest in some CF Express cards, but why not? It is the future and I will get better performance from my camera anyway. So it's Saturday night. I have just finished up the video. So thanks so much for watching. Cheers. And let me know what you think in the comments. As I said, I didn't even consider a Z9 before. I thought I liked the smaller size of the Z8. But, you know, also I think the, the, that grip on the Z9 helps when you're switching into portrait mode, which is something I want to do more because I want to take videos and do shorts and things for YouTube and Instagram. So that, I think, would be a benefit. Yes, it is quite a bit bigger and heavier, and I'm also a little bit worried is because that grip thing is quite big on the Z9, I sometimes like getting very low down to the floor. That won't let me get right down to ground level. I'll be a little bit above it, but I think that's not such a big issue. But the prices are the same. If I was buying new, I'd definitely get the Z8. I couldn't afford the Z9. But because it's used prices, I could probably go in and order a Z9 next week and get it within, you know, by next weekend almost. Hopefully we'll get this out tonight, but thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think. Basically, if you were choosing and it was the same price, which it is, between a used Z9 and Z8, which would you go for? Yes, I am definitely attracted to the smaller body size, but I also think the Z9 does offer benefits, especially with dealing with heavier lenses and also with the grip, you can switch to portrait a lot easier than you can with the Z8. And it's more rugged, of course, and you've got two slots for CF Express cards. So the whole system is faster. So let me know in the comments what you think. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully my next video will be more of in-the-field stuff that I usually do. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.